Hi, this is Arnav. Welcome to the channel. Today we'll be talking about hash time lock contracts and how they are beneficial for making payments routable across two or more payment channels by going through an example that uh, uses hash time lock contracts in which a person is wants to pay some money or some bitcoin to another person but doesn't have a direct payment channel open with them. So yeah, let's talk about hash time lock contracts today. So ha a hash time lock contract or HTLC is a class of payments that uses hash locks and time locks to require that the receiver of a payment either acknowledge receiving the payment prior to a deadline by generating cryptographic proof of payment or forfeit the ability to claim the payment returning it to the payer. The cryptographic proof of payment the receiver generates can then be used to trigger other actions in other payments making HTLCs a powerful technique for producing conditional payments in Bitcoin. And de descriptions of actually cross-chain atomic swaps are probably the origin of the technique HTLCs. And uh, if you think about it, the technology that people were using to make cross-chain atomic swaps happen are now called HTLCs. So that is sort of a, like a background about HTLCs. And in this video, but we'll try to concentrate on HTLCs and their application in payment channels. Payment channels already use time locks and it can be relatively simple conceptually to extend them with hash locks. And this provides the benefit of making payments routable across two or more payment channels. So this is like sort of the brief that I've given you and I'm setting up the story. And the story is, the real story is that Alice wants to buy something from Charlie for thousand Satoshis. So this is an Alice and this is Charlie. She wants to buy something from Charlie for thousand Satoshis, but she doesn't have a direct payment channel open with Charlie, but she has payment channel open with Bob who further has a payment channel open with Charlie. So what happens is that uh, as the first two conditions are mentioned here, then now is the thing which comes about when we talk about hash time lock contracts. So what happens is Charlie generates a random number and generates his SHA-256 hash, hash and Charlie gives that hash to Alice. So what happens is that this is Charlie and Charlie generates uh, X which is a random number and he generates H of X which is the hash of the number and the hash function used is SHA-256 and Charlie gives H of X to Alice. Okay, so this is what happens. Now what happens? Alice uses her payment channel to Bob to pay him 1000 Satoshis, but she adds the hash Charlie gave her to the payment along with an extra condition. In order for Bob to claim the payment, he has to provide the data which was used to produce that hash. So what happens is that this is Alice and she pays Bob 1000 Satoshis she gives him H of X, which was given to her by, uh, by Charlie. And she gives a condition to Bob that if you want to retrieve these thousand Satoshis, you need to give me X. That is the function that was used, the number that was used to create H of X. And now here's the interesting property about hash functions. So one property of hash functions is that if you know H of X, it is very difficult to guess X and the only way to guess X is by using brute forcing that is by guessing all the numbers and this is unlike a normal function say we have a square function called s of X and s of X if we know is equal to 9 we can say that X equal to plus minus 3 but in a hash function if say h of X equal to 9 we can't say X is any number we have to check each and every number, maybe starting from zero, we put in H of zero, we put in H of one, and maybe say when we put H of one million, we get nine. So X would be nine, uh, one million in this case. So that is the interesting pop, uh, property of hash functions. So when Alice gives Bob thousand and H of X, he can't actually know X by knowing H of X. Okay. So he would only know X if someone tells it to him. That is the condition that we have. Now what happens next? Bob uses his payment channel to Charlie to pay Charlie 1000 Satoshis 
and Bob's add a, adds a copy of the same condition that Alice put on the payment channel she gave Bob. So uh, this is Bob and this is Charlie and Bob pays 1000 Satoshis and H of X to Charlie and this is the same condition that uh, Alice had put to Bob but now Bob is putting to Charlie and he says to Charlie that you would be able to retrieve these 1000 Satoshis if you provide me with X but Charlie created the X himself himself and he knows x and h of x so charlie provides bob with x okay so what happens is charlie is able to retrieve the thousand satoshis so charlie has the original data that was used to produce the hash and so charlie can use it to finalize his payment and fully receive the payment from bob by doing so charlie necessarily makes the pre-image available to bob and bob uses the pre-image to finalize his payment from alice so this is what happens that Charlie gives Bob X and since whenever when Bob comes to know of X, he is able to retrieve, uh, he puts in X here and he's able to retrieve 1000 Satoshis from Alice. So basically what happens is first Bob uh, gave 1000 Satoshis to Charlie and then he got his 1000 Satoshis from Alice. And this ensures that Bob is not able to run away with the fund of Alice by any chance. So that, that, that is how hash time block contracts are used and there are obviously uh, time blocks in, in the contract. So there is a certain time for say um, when um, Alice has put in this condition. So there would be a certain time in which uh, till which Bob has to provide X um, and here as well uh, there would be certain time till which Charlie has to provide with X and um, if, if nothing happens if say Charlie doesn't provide X or say Bob doesn't provide X for a certain amount of time then the whole transaction would fail and no one no transaction would occur and no one would lose their funds so that is how hash time block contracts work and it is a super interesting concept and they open up a lot of new applications and we are going to talk more about those applications in the future videos as well so yeah hope you learned something about hash time block contracts and if you did Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future videos in blockchain, cryptocurrencies, decentralized exchanges, blockchain scalability issues and all that stuff. Okay, bye-bye.